Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first Boston Collective Film Festival team up with ASMR Kitten. Um, we're essentially today going to do like Mystery Science Theater, except everything is good that we're watching today. Um, and we're going to talk about these movies that were entered or that we made or that colleagues made um, and just just hang out and do do ASMR while getting these really cool projects in front of of everybody as a part of this um Boston Film Festival and with me the venerable the another adjective ASMR kitten hello thank you for having me (laughs) you're having me but yeah well that's true Uh, there yeah it's going on my channel fair (laughs) so um we're It'll be still be ASMR. We'll still be whispering. We'll still be relaxing people. Um, but we're gonna have silently coming up. So don't worry. Like if um, these films aren't all necessarily ASMR, um, if you want to enter, you can go to filmfreeway.com/boston, and we'll have a coupon code in this episode to to enter and be be a part of the film festival the next time around but don't worry like i know sometimes people do videos where they'll show videos and that video isn't necessarily asmr related um that's not the case here this is we're going to shut the sound off for the actual videos um and you'll just hear us sound good yeah that sounds good so let's start with and I have so I hopefully you're seeing the silhouette and I'm gonna try I put my liquid in like water like a not water uh, those lidded containers that you get at like the movie theater Oh, okay yeah but I don't and then I thought like I have to kind of really mime getting it so that in silhouette people will see the shape of the cup ah! uh, so I'm really gonna try to see if that actually yeah. shows up but I legitimately have popcorn before we get started, we both love Mystery Science Theater. Yes. We both love movies, but I don't know what snacks you get at the movie, and I think snacks are a big part Ooh, of movies and ASMR. Good question. Because I have popcorn with me here. You see, I'm a chocolate kind of fan, so a little bit of popcorn, a little bit of chocolate goes a long way, in my opinion, at the movies. Do you put it in the do you mix it into the popcorn? A handful at a time, and then another handful while there's still a good bite in there. Yeah. I generally get into the movie theater and make a huge amount of noise, <laughs> pouring all of the candy, all of the candy, into, into the popcorn. Into the bucket? Wow. Mm-hmm. It's commitment. It is. I go for it. So, where people... And now, instantly... By the way, if people don't say it enough to ASM artists, this is difficult to do. Um... Now, instantly, I have a piece of popcorn stuck in my throat, so... Yeah, (laughs) cough drops are very handy in this office. So, let's get to the video where people might know me from. Yeah. In order to promote this and to do ASMR Day, we made a cartoon. Um, And let's watch that cartoon together and talk about it. So, I guess you'll do a countdown of 3, 2, 1, play, and you can talk about making this video with me Mm -hmm, absolutely all right three two one let's play so that's me and i was introducing our video for the boston collective film festival i did not realize my lights were changing in the video or that is my laptop not sure (laughs) either way (laughs) I was very excited to have this opportunity to work with a local film festival especially since I live, I live around here. It was very nice to be offered that opportunity. And our idea for this video was really fun, in my opinion. We thought about what ASM artists go through. And typically, it's just interruptions and noise that I experience. So yeah, we're going to take a peek at what it is mm, sort of like, (laughs) sort of like having a ASM artist and a roommate. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 one of those things, right, where making the relaxing thing for ASM artists is often very 
not relaxing. Not relaxing for me, yes. Now, I have a question here. Yes. About a week after we released this, mm-hmm. you put out a photo of you with purple hair. I don't know if it was photoshopped. Ooh. But, but was that was was that coincidence? Or did you see this, you being drawn with purple hair, and then you put that photo? Like That was coincidence. I, I had um I had purchased a wig out of uh well, let's just say boredom. And uh <laughs> I thought it'd be fun to have something new, and then yeah, coincidentally, I happened to be drawn the following week with a, or the following the previous week with purple hair. Yeah. Do you do you like purple hair? You know. Do you think, do, were you thinking of going for it? No, not really. Um, I think violet is not my color, but purple, I could see purple working. Oh, oh, is this this is a correction that you're. Your wig you bought was violet. Yes, yeah, sorry. We have to we have to get specific on the color wheel here. <laughs> um, I've always wanted to dye my hair, and I just have never done it. Uh, I don't I don't know why, but uh, I've never gone for it. It's very and I would want. Yeah, it's very fun and liberating, um, especially doing a fun color like purple, green, whatever. If you want to match um, my roommate in this film. You could absolutely get green. That's what that's. So I want either green or like, like frost blue Ooh. is what I would do. Yeah. I like that. I've always wanted that. And now I have, I have really long hair right now. Yeah. I tried to grow uh, my mohawk out. <laughs> so it's, it would look really, it would look really uh, cool. Okay. I would love to hear, by the way, mm-hmm. our goal with doing this was, um, cause there was all sorts of delays in our, in, in, in making this come together, but I would love to hear other people's stories of ASM artists, like, and like animate them and voice them. And yeah. Do more of those. I think it was a really fun project. And even from the comments, people were so like curious about who I worked with, um, what this film festival is about. It really like intrigued and like sparked interest in some of my viewers that haven't necessarily had that peaked interest prior. So um, I think it's really wonderful to work with other creators going forward. Especially ASMR, which like is still so misunderstood. Mm hmm. Um, it's crazy to think it's been around longer than a lot of other, you know, you see apps that have very experimental ways of sharing videos and then you still see people not really using ASMR as a technique. And it's just that video is so funny and is still ASMR. I think I, I, I hope people got tingles from it. Yeah. Or at least, you know, if we're able to like laugh, relax at the same time. Yeah. Absolutely. So now we're going to, I have a question mm-hmm. because I have done animation for you and I'm very jealous because you have this new animation this year. Who did your new animation for your intro? Because oh. I did it for a different channel. Yeah. So that is Ian. He goes by Bearded Audio ASMR. Now Ian is a master at sound producing. He is an incredible asset to the community. Uh, regularly he goes out of his way to help out creators with his project with their projects and uses his knowledge and skills to really kind of hone in on how people can improve their YouTube their ASMR and uh, work with new programs and it's very amazing how he also on top of that of being a father and a husband and has a full-time job was able to make YouTube introductions for people that's absolutely amazing. I know. He's much more productive than me. I know, right? <laughs> Sometimes people list stuff, especially ASMR creators, and then when they list all the things that they have to do, initially I read it as like, oh, okay, this person's just venting some of their frustration and whatever. And then I, and then like, they continue to, to talk about what's going on. I was like, obviously this is to say they're not going to finish the video, right? Like, <laughs> Oh, this thing happened at work and this thing happened here. And I'm like, obviously these tweets and these Facebook messages are to say, no, I will not be doing this video. And then it comes out. I know. It's amazing. And it comes out and you know what? It's actually not that bad. (laughs) Yeah. So let's watch like, let's watch, I don't know. Let's watch like a few minutes until we have stuff to run out of to talk about of this video. Yeah. You want to count it down? Yeah. Let's do three, 
two, one, play. So cool. So my favorite part about this intro was I actually came up with the idea while it was like late at night and I wrote down on my phone notepad about this, uh, what I wanted the intro to look like. And I sent Ian a like screen capture of my rough 1 a.m. drawing and he actually turned it into that intro. Just from that? Just from a rough line of, uh, you know, rough uh, sketch. I will put in here, because I've seen this photo. Mm -hmm. um, you made a post about it. I will put it in here. And it is so ridiculous that he was able to do it. Because it's, it's, you know, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say anything bad about your creative abilities, which are vast. That was not the most descriptive. It was not your best piece of artwork. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure it's in the bottom five. But... <laughs> But it made something pretty great. Yeah. So tell me about this video, though. So this video was inspired um, by another ASMR creator. His name is um, Justin Robinson, and he does live layered sound mixes. And I had not really experienced live layered looping prior to Justin's work. However, he creates ASMR videos and content with such, uh, I can't even imagine, I can't even explain. It's just, it's just so interesting. It's so fascinating to me. And I was really intrigued by his creativity. So I wanted to take my hand at creating something with a lot of sounds, a lot of unique sounds, such as this water bottle. Um, I tend to think of and tend to explain the mason jar sound almost as like singing wine glasses because of the sound that it makes once you hit it with a baton. Yeah, what are you hitting it with? So it's actually a baton to a sound bowl and it has a little bit of felt so it doesn't uh, hit the glass too loudly. Mm. It's really cool. Yeah. So. We had talked about Bill, who runs Hack Thought Podcast with me, mm -hmm. and that's a part of the, the film festival and how we get the word out on it. Um, but we had a conversation this week about um, the great Ben Burt, who did a Ratatouille and did the sound for all the Star Wars. And he breaks down how to create um, sounds that aren't necessarily, you know, the realistic, mm -hmm. exact version. So, you know, I think famously he he will for footsteps or something roll a roll a pencil on a table and that creates the sound of someone like running at you yeah um and um i think by the time this comes out we'll have an episode where we did something similar and we recorded it before you actually put this out um where i tell the story about being underwater in a bath while hearing the sound of the bath being filled up mm -hmm. and how I wanted to recreate it and um, talking about like the different elements that you layer together in order to, you know, you can't just shove a microphone underwater. Yeah. So you have to think of creative ways to, to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I like this a lot. Yeah. Did you think about using like um, actual looping tech? Like, um, I would love to, but I don't have any looping tech, so I actually did this all in a audio program, and I had to kind of mix the whole thing, and it was probably one of the larger audio projects I've actually worked on. Ironically, though, the video is only 16 and a half minutes, so I really didn't do that much work, but behind the scenes, it was all mixing. Yeah, I mean, how do you plan a thing like this I'm always curious about this especially these no talking videos you know do you have a it's like improv but it's so long like do you have a something in mind or are you just going until you get bored of a sound yourself um a little bit of yeah a little bit of once I hear the sound for like three to five minutes I'm like okay can I make any additional sounds out of this and if the answer is no then I just typically move on um, mm. so you can almost see myself in most of my videos when I'm trying to make more noise than it's even capable of making <laughs> and you'll start to see like, oh, she's, she's just punching the item that she's trying to tap on at this point. She's going to move on probably. And I typically do move on. But there's so much, you know, it's like when you watch jazz musicians too, there's so much pressure. I know this is going to sound degrading to jazz and ASMR, but there's like 
I would feel so much pressure to make noise. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like there has to be sound. Absolutely. You can't just not have it. Yeah. So it's actually funny you say that because since this is a no speaking video, I find it more difficult to find things to speak about and leave uh, moments of uh, silence and to kind of allow myself not to speak especially being from the northeast i love to hear myself speak and i'm a very fast talker that is not good for asmr (laughs) yeah it's 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 interesting too what people like like i'm if it's a speaking video i kind of i i would think i always think going into it like i really want the person to be talking the whole time Mm -hmm. but then it, it really isn't it really isn't the case there is you do kind of have to have pauses and things like that to mm-hmm. to make it work. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, any other things you can think about with this this video? Um, you know, additionally, in a few moments, I tap on this um, giro. It's a wooden frog giro, and it's an instrument. And it was my first time ever using an instrument to create ASMR sounds. And um, I gotta say, I I wish I actually knew how to play more instruments other than just rubbing a stick up against another <laughs> wooden <laughs> item. But instrumental ASMR is something I really want to get into and I'm really fascinated by. I'll add to that too. I'm a big fan of unintentional ASMR. And one of the better ones I've seen involves a guitar repairman um, fixing one of uh, Willie Nelson's guitars and it it's it's fascinating that you don't see it more with asmr because it's like the the device itself naturally makes sound so almost everything with it has this even in in a broken one has Mm -hmm. this acoustic quality to everything it does yeah absolutely i love these things though they're so cute I, i know and they just make some great sounds i was really like the first time i got it i was like oh i'm going to get real chills and actual tingles in real life from my own striking of the gyro so i'll tell you one other thing too because we're not we're not going to get to it probably it, the rain stick mm-hmm. i recently bought my partner for her birthday a rain stick yeah and i bought her two one was the traditional rain stick and the other was this crazy like see-through metal one mm. and it's really maybe we'll put a picture of it here because it's it's just really cool mm-hmm. um, but yeah let's let's go on to the next one speaking of her this is this is a preview to so you guys can get an idea of what I do um, Reens is uh, my girlfriend and we make videos together um, she also helped produce my last documentary and my current documentary uh, so we're sort of a team and uh, this is our uh, trailer for our YouTube channel. So if you want to count it down, we'll watch that next. Yeah, let's do three, two, one. So this is Simon Air. We are sort of obsessed with rhythm games. We play a lot of DDR together. I've never seen uh, Simon Air pre- before. That's so interesting. <laughs> and then this is Rini talking about oatmeal and making <laughs> oatmeal in the microwave. I'm very picky about my oatmeal too, so I'm into this. Okay. <laughs> what is your m- weird oatmeal preference? Um, you know, I use a kettle and even though it's like a microwavable one. So that's kind of funny that you guys are discussing that because I already am using a kettle for a microwavable version of oatmeal because I don't know, I just like the way it comes out. But I'm the same as you. How, who are these people making oatmeal? Well, I'm going to be honest. I don't have a microwave. <laughs> yeah, and do you know how much credit that gets you with some people? Because I was the same way. I didn't own one for a while. And so people would talk about microwaves. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, yeah, I don't use a microwave. They'd be like, yeah, see? And they'll go into this thing. I'm like, no, it's because mine broke and I never bought yeah another one. i don't have like the space for one like they take up a lot of space it's like you know what i can just reheat elsewhere yeah it really is and i don't i'm eating popcorn right now and i had a whole year of becoming perfect at making popcorn on a stove not because of some thing against microwaves but because you can't all you can do with a microwave is turn it on or off you can't really 
perfected. If you don't like what's in the bag, there's not much you can do. Yeah, that's true. It's very true. Um, but any, but anyway, let's go on to, this is a pretty funny sketch. Mm -hmm. Um, this is Bill, who's a partner in, um, the Boston Collective Film Festival. Um, and this is a sketch he made that I think is particularly relevant to YouTube fans. Yeah. Uh, So if you count it down, well. All right. Three, two, one. Let's watch. He's smoothies of advertising. <laughs> I, I just think this is perfect. I just think this is such a good joke. The joke is, because um, I know people aren't hearing it, <laughs> that all three ads play at once, because that is how it feels sometimes. It, it, that's YouTube. very true. It, Especially when you're trying to like watch relaxing content. You know, why? I, this is one of the things that I have a question about, because there's so many people that are aware of ASMR. Mm-hmm. It's like, there should be, I have really blown my ears out with the ads that come on before ASMR because I'll load up you and and Shani and a bunch of different other people Mm -hmm. to listen to ASMR into a little playlist. And then in between, I, you know, all of a sudden it's a new, it's a new order at home food service and I'm, I can't hear it anymore. Yeah. I'm just, I have throw my headphones across the mm-hmm. room. I don't get it. Yeah. It, it is very frustrating. I almost wish it didn't play if advertisements, if it was in a playlist, but I, that's out of, you know, the hands at that point. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's very unrelaxing. Yes, I um, agree. But, but speaking of not, not relaxing, um, we have Dustria by Allison Tannenhaus, who's also um, a Boston area um, creator. Yeah. Um, and we'll watch her film if you want to count it down. Yeah. Three, two, one. So I spoke with all the creators that are on this, um, you know, to let them know that they would be a part and uh, that they were selected. Yeah. And. This was created using an app, um, and I have the name of the app written down, and it'll probably be popping up here too, but I, ha- I mean, backgrounds and things like that, and trippy backgrounds like this, have you ever thought about doing something with this kind of background in yeah, your work? Yeah, so I recently um, have been using a green screen occasionally for um, ASMR Twitch streams. And one thing that I'm really loving is these like dark backgrounds, but are also kind of ambient, like twinkling lights, because it adds Mm. this almost like outdoorsy, relaxing effect, like almost like you're sitting by the beach or something with friends looking at the stars. That's so cool. There's this genre of video art that's just so fascinating to me. I don't know if you've seen this um, type of, I don't know if they even label themselves ASMR, but there's a type of relaxation video where it's like either uh, an old fashioned cityscape or like an old log cabin looking, you know, thing. Mm -hmm. And then there's a loop of a, of usually a thunderstorm. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the, the video art for them is like, you know, I look at the elements and I'm like, somebody drew or did a cgi model for like all these different elements like these aren't they're not stock elements taken from somewhere like someone did it It yeah frame by frame handcrafted yeah it's crazy to think that people go through that I know it really is. I mean, even this right now, it's so trippy and so beautiful that, I mean, you could just like zone out and just watch this. I really could like forget that we're doing this video and just kind of get mesmerized by it all. Yeah, it's it's interesting. ASMR in its early days had a lot of hypnotic backgrounds like this, Mm -hmm. not nearly as creative, Mm -hmm. but um, certainly in this genre. And that seems to have faded a little bit yeah a lot of background preferences are like dark backgrounds um, which i understand i don't like when my phone backlight is being too bright and you know i I do understand that but i do love the 
cozy kind of ambient feeling of a intricate background. Yeah, I I'm gonna have to. I I haven't I haven't watched one of the twitches where you have this this twinkly background. So Ooh, I'll, maybe yeah. we'll put a photo up of it. Yeah. Um, but but this is this is great. Are, while we're on it, are you good at doing optical illusions and those things where you can see something in three D if you cross your eyes or whatever? Eventually, yes. It usually takes. I'm usually the last person in the room to do it. But I eventually will be like, oh, yep, I see it. That's cool. And then I can't unsee it. If you've ever seen the movie Mall Rats, I am like the guy in Mall Rats who cannot see the optical illusion <laughs> really? at all, ever. I, it works with some things. Like if there's a, if it's just like a trick mm -hmm. and like there's an actual image in it, like they take a photo and they do it, mm -hmm. I can usually do that. But if it's that magic eye thing where... You, it's not. It doesn't look like anything until you do it. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've literally never been able to. Yeah, they are difficult. We had to do some. I remember in PE class, it was like a test. I don't know why we were learning that in PE, but we were. And uh, I was very stumped by the optical illusion portion until someone pointed it out to me. And then I was like, oh, yep, I see it now. But yeah, why are we learning that in PE? <laughs> My... Uh, my favorite line about optical illusions is a book I own, which I always saw as just, you know, a book of optical illusions. Mm -hmm. um, and at one point, it describes optical illusions as a fun hobby, which I thought was selling optical illusions a little bit high. A little, yeah, just for, a bit. <laughs> for what it is. Just a smidge bit. But that, but that was Dustria. Uh, both, so I should clarify, because um, she says it in the description, uh, both artists in this, there's a, a separate... Um, Musician, you won't be hearing it in this video, but you can go look at it. And then there's Allison herself that made the video. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you introduce our next our next video. Yes, here. so I'm actually very excited about this one. This is by Crinkle Lovin ASMR, and we'll do three, two, one. Now Crinkle Lovin has created a video series called Suburban um, House Moms, or I think it's Suburban Moms. Off the top of my head, I'm struggling to remember but it's so interesting because crinkle oven has created roughly six or seven original characters who are moms in this city who all have kids that are in this school in a pta the entire concept is based off of real people if you think about it now i'm not saying that rachel herself has you know experienced these people but in the world, there are people that exist who are quote unquote Karens, who are trying to, you know, speak to the manager, who are trying to rule and have their reign over the poor little uh, making minimum wage barista. <laughs> and I just love the series for the originality, the drama, the fun. And I love the collaborations that she does with additional creators for other characters I, See, I and this is this is this genre of asmr that i find so that like even pushes asmr fans because like i have this i have this concept of asmr as being relaxing um but and so i, I sometimes get initially feel pushback when a video is for example if someone does a medical role play video mm -hmm. and they kind of imply that I'm not healthy, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that kind of stresses me out. But it's interesting that, you know, there is this genre of ASMR pushing the limits that kind of makes it more than, you know, same with ASMR artists like you doing Twitch stuff where it's like, it's more than just relaxation and sort of going beyond it being almost like a, like a service industry, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, ASMR and relaxing people and pushes it closer to, yeah, like radio art and drama and video Absolutely. storytelling. Yeah, it's it's because I uh, to be honest, when when you sent me the link and we were setting it up, I was like, oh, like this is this thing of not relaxing ASMR, but it is relaxing, and it's it's a big thing about a film festival is you should have films that define, you know, what the next phase of 
an, an art form is going to be. Absolutely. I think this is this is growing in a big way. It's Absolutely. Very cool. Yeah. My my favorite thing is how the series is almost like a reality television show that Rachel's created from the ground up that was, you know, it started with one or two original characters, but it has evolved into I would say roughly 20 characters, various degrees of who Rachel plays, Debbie, Karen, Kimber, uh, but then there's the husbands, then there's the children, then there's other people who live in this ASMR uh, town of sorts. And it just now, became I, a universe. I, I only heard about this from you. Mm -hmm. Are are you, are you uh, uh, slated, as they say in the film industry, to be a, a citizen of this town? I, I really hope I have the honor to be the barista who gets berated. I have experience being a berated barista in real life, so it wouldn't be far off if I got berated by Karen. Um, th it's, it's, it's also a thing that, while we're on the topic of film, where uh, it, it, a lot of times internet... Um, what I, like I'm gonna say it derisively, but internet genres of movie making mm -hmm. um, is sort of uh, eschewed by filmmaking at large, and it's kind of this this a series like this and lots of other really good ones I've seen sort of push it to say like you know American TV for example is very loud, um, and I, I like that, but it is weird that we're not seeing someone saying like you know oh, well, what if the whole movie is kind of not loud and not quiet and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, in these different scenarios that are uh, a, a different way of, of mixing audio. Yeah. I think you're a little bit of Quiet Place aims to achieve that, even though there's quite a bit of loud noise. Absolutely. Um, but I hope other filmmakers see this and see that you don't have to, you don't have to have things as loud. I know that sounds like a crude... Yeah, but reduction. Yeah, no, silence speaks volumes. This is great. How many other how many other characters? Oh my gosh. Um, I just do this. I'm way. going to be honest, off the top of my head, I'm going to say 6 to 7. It might be more. Um oh, as of wow. this being shot, um there was actually a death of one of the characters. One of the characters got written off. And there That's was so interesting. There was a funeral that uh, all these people attended. There was drama. There was backstabbing. There was new relationships and love triangles. This series is just so entertaining, and that's what I love about the entertainment side of the ASMR community. Is it's beyond something to fall asleep to. It's evolved into, as you said, an entertainment source. Yeah, it's and now there's noodles and I I did bring my popcorn for the movie theme, but I'm also starving, so this is as good a time as any to 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 pause yes. and go to our next one here. Yeah. So, um, this was another entrant, uh, it called uh, remotely working. Now, the irony here is me and Bill had made a um, it was sort of a radio, sort of a um. You know, we had an idea to, to make a series of the same name. Mm -hmm. And um, this filmmaker, which their information is here, uh, entered. And we had talked about before um, when they had entered as this as a script. I had told them, oh, we made something like this. And then they actually ended up entering as a film mm -hmm. years later and doing this film festival. And it's it's now finished. We're going to watch the, the trailer now. Yeah, that's... Um, so we had made a film of the same name, is what I'm saying, mm -hmm. me, me and Bill. So it's ironic. This is all coming coming full together circle. now. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's check it three, out. Three, two, one. Now, did you guys have similar themes for your videos, or are they actually very different? They were really different. <laughs> um, ours, ours was more about. Uh, more in line with the Karen thing of calling customer service. It was the point of view of, of me and Bill really feeling like isolated whenever we would call about a problem, mm -hmm. you know, uh, calling a company. And me and Bill are very into like um, just the bu bureaucracy of things being done from, from a distance. Mm -hmm. This is more 
about the experience of being at home, being remote working, um, and uh, more from the point of view of, of real life as opposed to me and Bill's project, which was like just feeling crazy having to call someone, mm-hmm. and, you know, feeling like it doesn't, the thing you're telling me is going to happen doesn't work. It's not happening. Like, no. Help me out. Yeah. And they're telling you, no, it's it's working. And you have to be like, no, it's definitely not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this this was more about, um, I spoke to the filmmaker and the, the themes of, and I've seen, you know, the project, which is unreleased. Mm-hmm. But it was more about the hypocrisy of like, oh, yeah, I'm. I, I'm, I'm talking to that client right now and you're out at the grocery store. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like I'm absolutely remote. working, of course. Oh my, it's just not downloading, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was more, more, more of an office comedy as opposed to ours, which was um, more of a, more, more about me and Bill who work alone a lot of times and then feeling like, uh, uh, I'm trying to get in touch with anyone that can help me and feeling like you're sort of, even though you have the internet at your fingertips, you feel sort of, oh, like helpless, like no one can help me with this. Absolutely. I, there's no source. Yeah. It's very difficult when you're trying to play IT by yourself. <laughs> I've had conversations, just this is where the inspiration came from, where you're, I'm talking to the IT people and they don't even know. Mm-hmm. You know, we get to that level where, where they don't know. So that was my experience was like no this is an actual mystery the thing i'm call- i act i'm not just somebody you know like the it crowd turn it on and off again like mm-hmm. I, no this actually doesn't work yeah oh my goodness <laughs> um but anyway we both know the next person yes we both worked with talk asmr shani previously on our um on our soon to be trying to continue um, ASMR D and D game, mm-hmm. which now, you know, what's so interesting is now there are a lot more tools that make it easier to play D and D. Yes, and any sort of role playing game from afar. So yes. it would be so easy for us to do this again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm um, very excited. But this, on that same theme, um, is uh, I mean, that whole group that do, that did that that ASMR duo with us that did the. The, that was in the ASMR ones mm-hmm. they, we were all very into I think you out of all of them who's the most into games I think you did the have done the least like fantasy-ish stuff yeah you know? I, yeah absolutely I'm not much of the fantasy ASMR um, creator myself which is sort of why I selected ASMR Shani um, as one of my like colleagues I just am fascinated by the creativity she has I mean this video is titled um, Kidnapping and Hypnosis Roleplay. Now, when I hear the word hypnosis, I don't really think of myself getting hypnotized to be kidnapped. But what she means is you're going to go under her sleep spell, but you're in a position, the viewer, who is uh, quote unquote kidnapped. And I find that scenario to be oddly relaxing even though it seems threatening in the real world it still is this personal attention this personal uh safe space that's just so interesting and so cool to be indulged in and that's why i love shani's fantasy creations so why don't you count it down and we'll start watching it and keep talking about it yeah absolutely uh let me reset there we go so This is ASMR Shani's intro, which was also done by Ian Bearded Audio ASMR, who made mine. And uh, this video is, we'll call it a second in the series. The first one, she stumbles upon a cabin and needs shelter. However, from my understanding, she is really just taking you, turning you, and making you a vampire. And putting you to sleep while doing it. You've seen that one? Yeah. Yeah. This, this is, it's very, I mean, it looks really cool too. The amount of costumes, whether or not people actually have them as costumes or just make the wardrobe work mm-hmm. too, with, with, especially with ASMR creators, it's just like, where did you, did you, did you, which came first? Like, I would love to ask Shani, you know, mm-hmm. did you have, you know, this outfit and or is it like an amalgamation of other outfits yeah. and stuff you know it's it's really cool absolutely and then to do it 
to do ASMR with fangs on. I have a big problem with big budget movies where they put fangs on someone and the person doesn't get practice with the fangs or whatever it is and they sound bad Mm -hmm. uh and it's like a big writ if you've never talked with even professionally put in fangs in your mouth like i went to school for for uh, effects makeup yeah when you put fangs in your mouth it is very it's like having worse braces you know it's like they they stick out and Mm -hmm. she does a really good job of not sounding like you know something's stuck in her mouth absolutely it's very difficult to do yeah absolutely and back to sort of what we were talking about uh previously about the outfits from experience i certainly have thrown together five things in my closet and been like you know what i think this is it (laughs) so i'd definitely be interested in seeing what shani what shani does for her costumes because um, if you go through Shani's YouTube channel, there are just so many different costumes and cosplays and outfits that it's just like, how did you, where do you have, how many closets do you have? <laughs> yeah, because cause you have done um, some cosplay stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to recall all of them. Now, which involved, uh, I guess, which of them involved actual, because I know one involves an actual, like, you have to go the cosplay route of really looking for the outfit. Although I don't know, you can tell me if this is um, the case. I'm, I'm thinking of one. How many were actual, like cosplay outfits, and how many did you kind of, I've put together? I've thrown a few together, definitely. I have um, one cosplay that I do in particular, and I had to buy like a few accessories, but a lot of the like additional clothing I was able to just sort of grab and go from my closet. Um, whether that be like a pair of shorts or like, you know, something like bottoms, I am like, I don't need to worry about that. I can just sort of, you know, casual cosplay that instead of doing like such an elaborate, uh, expensive garment. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's amazing what, what people, what people put now, have you ever, do you go to cons normally? Yeah. Like Comic cons? Yeah. So um, I frequent Rhode Island Comic Con every November. It's one of my absolute favorite events. It is so uh, well put together, well organized, and I love all of the featured creators, the featured panels, artists, even all the artists in Artist Alley. It is just such a great con to go to if you're in uh, New England. And do you go in cosplay or you I, just watch? Yeah, you know, I have the past two times I've gone. Um, I do enjoy cosplaying, but towards the end of the afternoon of the convention, you sort of find yourself dragging your feet a little bit, kind of being like, you know, I wish I wasn't wearing this. Yeah. Um, I've, I, w- when uh, I was in New York uh, years ago, I was at Comic-Con for professional reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, and... We went one day in cosplay, me and a friend, and our deal was, look, we're not going to spend too much on the cosplay. Like, it's going to look bad. And then the other rule is, at some point, we will throw them in the trash mm-hmm. so, <laughs> so that we actually have, like, a good day. And inevitably, I think we made it, I don't know, two minutes. Before, uh, we, we, the walk there was pretty... Oh my brutal. gosh. We did not last long. So yeah. Oh my gosh. So. Yeah. I've definitely made it like almost the whole convention, but by like hour four or five, I'm like, yeah, if I'm going to be here another three hours, I'd like to be comfortable. <laughs> well, this, this was an absolute, an absolute treat to get to watch. We yeah. have, um, we have one more here that we'll, we'll end with. So this is, um, we also have, and I guess we'll say before we talk about the last thing here, um, Let's do our plugs. That way we can, you know, end with talking about art and not have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll say for sure, um, go to filmfreeway.com slash Boston. And I say that before our last entry because this is a podcast and we accept anyone doing, if you have a published work, you can pretty much enter. And if you feel like you can't, um, send, send an email through Film Freeway and... I'm certain that we will look at it and consider it Mm -hmm. and uh, try and get, because we want to have as many different things. Absolutely. uh, On it. Yeah. Um, So let's play right now. Uh, 
the first few minutes of Thick Skin, mm-hmm. um, which is a part of um, the Lavender Scare uh, podcast. And we'll go three, two, one, play. As a transition about this, uh, this episode of their podcast, it involves a, um, I chose this episode because it involves a Selkie. Mm-hmm. Are you aware of what a Selkie is? Oh, gosh, I do. I am aware, but I am unaware of exactly what it is off the top of my head. It is a seal that is in reality. It's a little bit unclear. Um, Reens's favorite mythological character is the Selkie. Mm-hmm. But I believe it's it's like it's similar to a mermaid, mm-hmm. except it's more it's more like Ariel's situation. OK, so it's like you they look like a seal while they're in the water, Mm -hmm. but then they can shed their skin and wear it as sort of like clothing Mm -hmm. and come on land and be a human. Yeah. But I don't think they are a human or a seal. They're sort of like a D and D character. Yeah. Like they are a different species of of mythological character. Mm -hmm. Um, But, I know you guys are just seeing the the logo here, but this is um, uh, they're uh, the two people running it. I believe are partners together, and they um, they do these audio dramas, and it's 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 a uh, really well made, and I recommend you guys listen to it. Mm-hmm. Lavender Scare. Do you listen to any um, audio drama podcasts? Uh, not particularly. Um, there is a genre of audio drama ASMR, which um, I definitely have like peaked in on, but I've never really dabbled in too much. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's I'm in the same place as you. Is I I have not I have not done too much of it, mm-hmm. and this this entry made me realize that I should probably be listening to, to more of it yeah absolutely it's it's a whole like sub subcategory of the internet that i wish i actually knew more about you're correct on that yeah um so let's let's um let's call this a huge success i think right yeah. this was i hope people i hope people tell us whether they like it or whether they want i mean this was so i really want more asmr entrance too i want to like this was so much, f- it was fun and cozy, like watching all of these ASMR videos and learning about ASMR. I hope, I hope people will, will enter, you know, I'd love, to, I hope we get enough entries that we have to do a video of just featuring ASMR creators and a separate video mm-hmm. of just featuring filmmakers. Cause this was, this was, it was so much fun to learn about these ASMR things. Yeah, I think that would be so great to do, uh, like, a soul ASMR entries in the future. Yeah. Um, so I'll let you, I'll let you sign off here. Um, but this was so much fun. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, inviting me on to this. I feel very honored to be a part of something local, some local art. It means so much to be able to give back to the Boston community. And, of course, with it being digital, the whole entire world <laughs> the, they might even call it the World Wide Web. I've heard <gasps> they're gonna guess. They might add that. That might be what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I this is it's, it's really great to connect with people in your city and all over. I'm I'm super proud of this product, even though it's we're just recording it now. But I'm sure it comes out really good. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and we're and we're doing. So people know we're doing the next season here too. We're doing so. If you enter now, you'll have a chance to, 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 to be featured on this channel mm-hmm. again. Yeah. So yeah. just so people understand that. But uh, all right. All people. right. Yeah. Thank you so much. So uh, I am ASMR Kitten, and uh, all my socials, everything down below, will be in the description. And any of the creators that were featured today will be sure to link their applicable links down below as well. And as well as putting Mike's content in the description as well. Thank you so much, Mike. No problem. It's so much fun. I love doing stuff with you. Yeah, me too.